In this video, I'll walk through how you can create an interactive map in a data wrapper. Now, the source uh, data that we're going to use in this tutorial is from Eurostat, and it concerns the employment rates of recent uh, graduates in different European countries. So I'll leave a link to this article in the video description. And then if you scroll down here, you will see Eurostat has a nice map of the different employment rates of graduates who completed their studies. This is the map that we're going to try and replicate in Data Wrapper. And what's very helpful here is that Eurostat provides us with the source data. If we press this link, we'll get into their data browser where everything will be set up correctly with uh, all the filters and so on. So the data is there and we can just head over to download. And in this tutorial, we'll use a spreadsheet and then copy and paste the data into Data Wrapper. We could also download it as a CSV file, but I'll show that in a different tutorial. So press the spreadsheet and let that download. And once that's finished, open the spreadsheet and it should have this structure where you can go into the last sheet here and then make sure that you just select this top row here with geo labels as well as all the rows with the source data. So here, just go ahead and copy that and then we're ready to import it into Data Wrapper. So head over to the Data Wrapper web page. If you don't have an account that's easy and free to set up, you should see this uh, top menu here once you're logged in. Go to create new then map and it should give you this screen. So today we're making a corplet map. So press that and in the next screen we will have the option of selecting what type of map we would like. So here we'll go with Europe then proceed. So before we paste our data it's very important that we tell Data Wrapper what kind of matching key we have for our data. At the moment it's looking for three letter ISO codes for the different countries. But you'll recall that Eurostat has given us the full country names. So go into the Match tab, then Names, and then back to Upload. And now we're ready just to go in and paste the data. So recall, this is all the rows here. And don't worry if this top uh, uh, row for the values is empty, Data Wrapper will handle that. So paste the data, then press the blue button here, and it should match correctly. You can see though for our data set here, one row has an error and that's uh, Czechia, which in data wrapper uh, is uh, matched with the key Czech Republic. So to fix that, you can select this cell, copy that, then go ahead and paste it above the um, previous entry. So now we don't have any errors and we're ready to go into our next uh, visualization step. We can already see our map uh, previewing here. So press the visualize button and that should bring up our map here with the pre-selected color palette. And uh, you can see here Data Wrapper supplies many different color schemes here you can select from. You can even upload your own. But I think the first one here works uh, very well for the data that we have. And there's a few things we would like to change to uh, bring us closer to the Eurostat layout. You'll recall that uh, they are using these six different bins for the colors. And so to replicate that here, we would first select steps and then go from five to six. You can see we have some decimal values. We can fix that by using the rounded values. It's kind of like a magic button when uh, creating maps sometimes. And you can see that Data Wrapper has sorted this now with uh, uh, the brightest color for below 70 and then the darkest for above 90. Notice too that uh, we have a few options for how we can display this legend. So we have uh, ranges and then we can also do a custom legend if we want where we can write the text ourselves. But for this example we'll go for the ruler option. So the thing we need to change here is to select uh, our format as percentages we can also do some modifications to its position. So at the moment it's above the visualization and we can change that to, um, for example, the top uh, center. So at first it will bring this above the countries here, the, the countries in Northern Europe here. So let's go down and add some uh, padding to avoid that. So that would 
give it some space. Uh, we can also make it a bit bigger to uh, give it a more prominent space in the visualization. And lastly, I usually select enable highlighting on hover. That gives this effect here when you select the different countries. A few more options is that for appearance, you can also make the map uh, zoomable. That will uh, bring up uh, this zoom button here. So uh, that's uh, useful, especially for maps where you don't necessarily see all the countries at once. And the position here is at the bottom right, but you can change that. But I think bottom right works well for our uh, example here. So then we're ready to proceed to our next uh, step, either by pressing proceed button here or pressing the annotate up here. So we'll first enter a title. So that's going to be employment rate of recent graduates in 2022. This is the share of uh, that who are employed within one to three years of finishing their studies. And uh, it's always good practice to add the source and also a link to the source data. We can just copy the link from the article. And now you will see these appearing uh, down below our map. So a few more options you can enable if you like is to have labels in the map. So uh, by enabling that you can either have the place here or you can do by column and then go to X1, which is going to be a, that that is the column name for our data, the values themselves. So pressing that will uh, bring up all the values inside the map. So uh, you can change then the format, for example, setting it to a percentage with one decimal. So it's not showing everything here now because we have enabled the prevent label overlapping. And that, uh, that can be helpful to not... Uh, you can see if we disable that, uh, you will get some labels that you can't actually see the value. So let's keep that on. And you can also then change the zoom level for when the labels will appear. So setting this to above one, means that uh, they will only appear when you zoom into the map. So I think we can leave it at that at the moment. Uh, so I think uh, keeping all the labels there at once it makes the map a bit busy, but uh, this is uh, all down to your personal uh, preference. So let's go ahead and uh, keep this at uh, 1.2. And then for annotations, uh, we're not going to use them here, but if you would like to use them, just go ahead and press the plus sign there. And that means you can actually make a text box and write right inside the map. So for example, one piece of uh, information that could be useful here is the EU average. So doing that will, um, and you can also modify this by text size and position and so on, um, but we're not going to use that in this example. So Go ahead and, and take that away again. Uh, there we go. Uh, just one final step here to modify. Uh, you'll see when we um, uh, get the tooltip here, we're actually missing the percentage sign for different countries. So to fix that, go ahead and press uh, customize tooltip. You'll see that the code here means it's only going to give us the value for the different countries without any signs afterwards. So uh, to change that, go ahead and remove everything there. And then for X1, you can go down and select, uh, for example, 0.0%. And that will fix the formatting for that one. So also for tooltips, there are many options how you can change the text size and so on. But uh, I think actually this will work uh, for our example now. So the last step here is to go to proceed so we can uh, publish our map. But before that, let's uh, go ahead and uh, enable the image download. That gives us a link here that directly enables someone who views the map to get a PNG file to import it into a presentation or a document. You can also here select social media share buttons and embed links and so on. Uh, go then to proceed and we're ready to publish our visualization. So then just press publish now. And once that's done, you will get this uh, shareable link that if you open, this is how it's going to look like when you share your visualization. 
And if you go back, you will also see you have uh, embed codes for um, inserting this chart as uh, interactive into a WordPress site, for example. And all the way to the bottom here, you can then also press PNG to, to get um, the image file that I mentioned. Notice that in this menu, you can also then select that you just want to have the chart downloaded. Uh, or if you want to have uh, the background as white or a transparent background, for example. So that's it for this uh, walkthrough. I hope you found it useful. One small note at the end here is that uh, if you'd like to follow this uh, walkthrough without doing any of the data collection steps and so forth, I'll include a link to this uh, visualization in the video description. And that means you can just go ahead and press get the data. That will give you a CSV file. And uh, that means you can kind of shortcut all of the, st the steps we did for it Eurostat. Uh, when you get to add the data, you will then upload that CSV file and it should import uh, all the values correctly without having to do any of the, uh, you recall we did, um, with, um, we fixed the error with the Czech Republic, for example. So thanks again for watching and uh, see you in the next video.